Welcome to another episode of Market Overdrive. It is Thursday and it's a rainy day here in the city of Chicago. We are downtown hanging out in the Chicago Tribune uh, building, which is going to be changing in the next but two more weeks. With me, as always, my co-host, not Nick. Not Nick. Rocco Foon is here. How are you guys? We're doing great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm a little sad that this building is getting converted into condominiums. I'm a little sad they're kicking us out. No, yeah. They didn't our, even give us a notice. They're like, goodbye. But on a plus, our <laughs> new space our new space is a lot nicer and has much better views than we do here on Michigan Ad. So looking forward to the new space. Uh, thank you for joining us today, guys. We have an amazing show. Uh, Carla's having a pretty bad day, so we're going to try to lighten <laughs> things up for her here did you have to say it yeah <laughs> i'm not having a bad day it's just a difficult real estate market and i'm exhausted so i'm drinking coffee because i'm that tired yeah. she's losing deals out there left <laughs> and right <laughs> you don't say that i'm not losing deals i'm just not winning them <laughs> okay that's terrible <laughs> it is horrible you have to like seriously you have to show 20 properties to one buyer and there's like I mean, there's like so many buyers and there's one property for all of our market. It's tough. It's and tough. It's tough. I just and, can't uh, cope. But we have a solution. We right? do? We do have a solution. You figured it out? It's simple. It's new construction. Uh, I touched on this on a previous show. The more new construction we have out there, the more inventory is going to open up. And the more willing that people are going to want to put their homes on the market to sell. So you builders out there, you developers, make sure you keep pushing this new construction. Uh, today in studio, we have an amazing guest. We have Andrea Hepner of At Properties visiting us. And she's going to tell us a little bit about this amazing new development, which is, well, it just opened up their sales center here at uh, 1000 Michigan. It's an amazing new development, and I'm going to have Andrea touch on that here shortly. But Andrea, welcome. Tell us a, a little bit about yourself and how long you've been in the industry. And we're happy to have you here in studio today. Thank you for having me today. I'm excited to be here. Um, so I've been in real estate for about 12 years now. I started with that properties. I'm still with that properties. I'm very nice. happy there. Um, and prior to real estate, I was a pastry chef. And while I was in culinary school, I what? worked for. Awesome. Okay, so dessert is my favorite time of the year. I love dessert. Favorite I time of am the your year. girl. What's your favorite dessert? <laughs> Everything. Caramel cake. Pumpkin. I like red velvet cakes. You like red, red velvet, velvet? Cupcakes, yeah. chocolate. I can make anything. Devil, are you serious? Yeah. You're my I still bake. BF, I bake BFF every week for my clients. Really? I bake, get it out of the house. All right, well, save so us So what a made little... you get into real estate? From sweet to super sweet. So you know, when I was in when I was in culinary school, I wanted to make money, so I had a day job. <laughs> that thing. I went to school on nights and weekends. <laughs> <laughs> that thing. I wanted to make money. We all, we all want to make I money. I wanted to make money. I was 18, so I started working for a property management company. Uh huh. So I was an assistant there. I was a property manager. I did leases. I helped everyone in the office, and I really liked doing that. But once I graduated culinary school, um, I became a pastry chef. I was working in um, Miami and in mm. Chicago, so I had a few different jobs. And then I was just burnt out. I helped open up two restaurants as a pastry chef, and I was working 100 hours a week. Wow. And it was just exhausting. And at the time, I was living in Miami, and I was over it. It's all about supermodels and yeah, I love Miami though. It's fun to it's <laughs> fun to visit. It's t it's tough to live. It's fun to visit. So yeah, um, I can I never just, survive that Miami life yeah, style. I lived in South Beach. Oh wow, I lived okay. in South Beach. So it, it was it was tough, but I had my fun there. I opened a restaurant, and wow. um, I decided it was time to switch careers at the ripe age of uh, twenty four. Oh, wow. And so I came back to Chicago, and I remembered that I liked doing the leasing, but I wanted to do something a little bit more. So mm -hmm. I just looked into getting to my re my real estate license. And so I went to CAR, got my license, and interviewed at a few companies, loved at properties. So nice. I picked them, and that's, that's great. How it all started. So you were at 24, you were already a business owner. So you owned your own, own bakery, is that what you said? I didn't own my own bakery, but I was hired by uh, two different hotels to be their pastry chef. 
Yeah, she's really good. That is so awesome. <laughs> Love it. Hey. And of course, we know each other from back in the days when we both were little kids. Um, Young Professional Network. YPN. <laughs> shout YPN. out. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a long time ago. It was so long ago. That was so fun. Less bags later. <laughs> <laughs> but we're so excited to bring you on because seriously, I want to say that the building that you're representing um, that we're talking about today and of course we're talking about new construction but it's not just new construction it is luxury at its best i mean amenities galore and just the sexiest of amenities i mean a, uh, what is it a music room a penthouse with amazing views um and of course everybody can, can claim that they have these things but i just think this level of sophistication and just mm -hmm. like uniqueness the uniqueness of your designs i i i mean i love the development can you tell us a little bit more about your project and the name of it absolutely Absolutely. So 1000M is a 74 story condominium building located at 1000 South Michigan. Um, we have 323 units and 167 floor plans. The building's all glass, steel, and aluminum, very modern design. Helmut Jan is the architect, so we're very excited mm -hmm. to have him. And Kara Mann is the designer for the interiors. Uh, we have 40,000 square feet of amenities. Um, it totally blows everything out of the water. We have a 72nd floor roof deck that has an indoor and outdoor winter garden. Um, we wow. have a 1000M bar that will be staffed Thursday through Sunday for happy hour. Yes. We have a wine tasting <laughs> room. We have living walls. We have a full chef's kitchen that will host dinner parties in and cooking classes. What is the living wall? A living wall is a wall that can grow plants. Basically, mm. there's irrigation behind the wall and okay. the plants grow on it. Um, the whole thought behind that was they, we wanted to have greenery year round, and since it's cold in Chicago many months, mm -hmm. that was a way to have some greenery year round. So this is an amazing project, and the reason I reached out to you and I visited the uh, sales center quite a few times is because I just am f floored by the amenities that are offered. I mean, one of the coolest amenities that I've heard, and I've never actually. Uh, known any other city to do this uh, aside from New York is there's a driver on staff is that correct we do we have a driver on staff we'll have a luxury SUV and the owners will be able to book online and they'll be able to be um, taken within three miles of the building so if you're going to the theater if you're going out to dinner if you want to go to the grocery store that's then awesome there is a driver on hand that's awesome I want to stop by. I can like I just stop by and use your driver. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, the location is phenomenal. Just tell us a little bit more about the location. Sure. So 1000 South Michigan is located on the Cultural Mile, um, which is basically mm -hmm. Michigan Avenue from the river down to Roosevelt. And it houses um, um, the Art Institute. It also houses a bunch of places where you can see theater and mm -hmm. concerts. Um, you're very close to Soldier Field, different museums, mm -hmm. the aquarium. There's tons of restaurants within walking distance. Uh, public transportation is amazing with the red, green, and orange line right there. There are a bunch of schools in the area. Mm -hmm. um, it's across the street from Grant Park. Yep. Obviously, it's on the lake. You have Super everything. Walkable. We have everything. So talk everything. about location, 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 location right? Location, Phenomenal. Location. So if you want lake views, you want city views, you want jungle park views, that's what you get. Um, and it's a, it's a really cool building because you get views from wherever within the design. Can you tell us a little bit more about the architect? Sure, so Helmut Jan is from Germany. Um, the last building that he did here in Chicago was 600 North Fairbanks. So he builds very modern looking buildings. He did the expansion at O'Hare. He's doing projects around the world right now. Um, He's just a very interesting and unique gentleman. We actually bought the building next door at 1006 South Michigan, and that way he was able to cantilever the building over to the south of the building. Nice. So the building actually grows to the south, and then from the 22nd to the 69th floors, uh, the building grows by 12 feet. So one, one issue that I've had, and I visited the sales center quite a few times, is I'm having a tough time figuring out which unit to acquire 
right? They're buying? Mm-hmm. Official? <laughs> I get this on tape. <laughs> Do you I've know, Grok and I have been shopping for three years. Yeah, we've been shopping. Like, oh, you're killing well, me. Carly. No, <laughs> I, won't, I fired him like a lot of times. I was like, I won't be offended if you call the person directly. I won't be offended if you do this. Everyone wants to be his realtor, just so you know. I saw it in action. Okay, See? <laughs> Beware. Let them know he's taken. Damn. Well, you know what's happening is that what's happening, Ross? Carla's losing deals out there left and right. So <laughs> I am not losing all of them. <laughs> just mine. <laughs> just yours. <laughs> On purpose. Hey, just last week you lost one of mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? You didn't even offer. <laughs> oh, let's not even get our problems out on the air. Okay. Because that was your fault right, and you don't to, listen let's, to him. Let's, he doesn't to listen to anybody. <laughs> we'll touch on that a little bit later. We're not touching on anything. Getting back to 1000M, you know, I'm having a tough time myself uh, choosing the unit. You know, choosing the right mm-hmm. square footage, the bedroom count. Uh, the views are very important. And the reason I'm having a tough time is because I'm also thinking long term. Mm-hmm. If I'm investing in a project that's going to take call it three to four years to build out Mm -hmm. i want to make sure that i'm choosing the correct unit for myself as an owner and as an investor you know what if there's another building that goes up in the near future and blocks my views i'm stuck um so that's where i go back and forth the question i have for you andrea is how do you help distinguish for buyers on choosing the correct unit when buying new construction Mm -hmm. especially when the structure it's is yet to be built Right. So there's so many different floor plans. So that is a little bit of a challenge. Um, But usually I just ask, you know, the buyer how much they want to spend, how much space do they need, what view is important to them. And then we pretty much whittle it down from there. And are they going to live there? Are they buying it as an investment? And that really helps me guide them to find the perfect unit. Okay. Well, because what was your concern? I mean, so that you can share your experience. Um, for people who are listening and may ha- be in the same yeah, so, predicament. You know, I obviously have a, a certain amount of money that I can spend as well. I don't have endless pockets. And my concern was... Really? You know, are you really? pre-approved? <laughs> can, I, can we buy something? Wait a minute, I'm cash. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a loan. <laughs> we don't take mortgage contingencies. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so talk about that, right? Because it's completely different. Like, what does it mean when you're saying um, in the uh, developer's contract that you don't take a mortgage contingency? So basically, you have to know you're solid and you can afford mm-hmm. the property. You have to give earnest money. It goes hard after attorney approval. We ask for more earnest money when we're breaking ground. Mm-hmm. And after that, you better be you sure. You better be ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So get pre-approved before you go shopping. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're also doing an earnest deposit. And if you can't close, then we lose and we walk away then from you, the earnest deposit. Then you lose 10% yeah. of the purchase price. You definitely can't money. lose 10% in this building because it's a lot of money. It's pretty expensive. <laughs> it's a lot of money. It's higher up there, right? But it comes with <laughs> the, um, the amenities and the lifestyle. Because I think at this point, you're not just selling, obviously, the location, but also all the amenities that you mentioned earlier. Right, right. We're definitely selling the lifestyle. So besides the other amenities that I was talking about earlier, um, we also have some unique features in the building. We have a spa that has a Himalayan salt room. Yum. There is a hot and cold plunge pool, a steam and sauna. A hydration station um, along with warming chairs and that's all just in the spa we also have a beauty bar we have concierge that can book a yoga lesson a golf lesson mm-hmm. um, if you want to get a shave you can get a shave we also have a golf simulator that has beer on tap we have a music <laughs> studio <laughs> why are not, you why are you leave not the building that's the point an you never so have to leave. my producer in my ear is telling me well, what are the pros of this building and the pros are right there, dude. Tell them to listen. Everything <laughs> imaginable oh, is, is in the complex. You don't never have to leave. Pay attention. Yeah. Pay attention. I don't. Well, see no, he didn't say you have the building. See, oh. you don't read. It says, "Come on, guys, give me some pros and cons of yeah, buying ahead of time." It. I was just twisting it a little bit. <laughs> leave oh, me go thanks, alone. Price, <laughs> price. So the pro of buying right now are prices. The prices do go up with new construction. The more we sell, mm-hmm. the more we raise prices. And that was my take on it, guys. Uh, I've been known to buy new construction for quite some time. Uh, During the heyday when our market was really great here in the city, there was a lot of new construction developments going on around the city. And what I would do is I would park my earnest money because I knew these projects would take two to three years to build Mm -hmm. out. So if I'm getting in at an early pre-construction contract price, call it 
300,000, while that project is being built for the next two to three years, my unit is appreciating in value. So keep that in mind. You parked a little earnest money, but your unit is increasing in value while that construction is being built. So that's something to mm -hmm. consider. And that was one of the primary reasons why I wanted to park some money here at 1000 M. So that's something to keep in mind when you are buying new construction, you are going to get in at a cheaper price. Uh, but you're going to reap the benefit of appreciation down the road. You definitely will. And also, if you think about it, it's much harder to sell a property off of a piece of paper. So once the building's actually built, the mm -hmm. prices are always higher yeah. because it's easy when you can walk a buyer through and actually show them the space. Right. But as far as your showroom, I mean, I think the design and the whole concept of it, and that was one of the things that I told my client, it's like, how confident are you that they're gonna be able to sell and break ground, right? Because it's mm -hmm. always a concern. Is the developer gonna be able to meet the guidelines of their investor or financier? And I believe that with the way your, your, your model is staged, um, and just the presentation, the overall sleekness of the presentation, it's its amazing. I mean, just the video production, and then you have the 360 view, actual view of of what you, what the property, you know, what it will look like outside each level. So can you tell us a little bit about the design and what was thought, the a thought that went behind that? Absolutely. So Ken Reha was the designer. We love him. He's a genius. Um, we won best uh, sales center in North America by the Home Builders Association. Wow. Wow. So, and I would not start a project that I don't think that would finish. Mm -hmm. um, so when people come in, we start with the model of the building. We can light up the units in the model of the building to show them where their unit would be. And it also shows the surrounding buildings so they can see where they're at. Uh, after that, we take them to our touch screens. We go over the floor plans, the mm -hmm. area, uh, the developers, uh, as well as the amenities. When we're finished with that, we go to our viewing wall and we have 360 views from every four floors. Uh, we had a drone do all the shots so the owners can see exactly what they'll be looking at. All right. How um, much they seem to be very excited about. Because that's always an unknown. People want to know what they'll see, and there they can actually see what their view would be. So people get really excited when they see that. And then we have three full kitchens and two bathrooms in the back of the studio. Um, so they can see all three kitchen packages as well as two of the bathroom packages. All right. This is gorgeous. Let's pause here really quick, guys. We're going to do a nitro question, as I mentioned to you before. A quick nitro question. Andrea, a past experience in your career, your last 12 years, you know, you've been with App Properties. Mm -hmm. The most embarrassing moment in your real estate career, you don't have, have to answer at this moment. Let's give it five or 10 minutes and then we'll come back. And this segment of the Nitro Question is brought to you by our sponsors and I'm gonna name them all here because it's a special day. <laughs> we have Lisa of Allstate Insurance. We have Joanna from Credit Rx. We have Tamika Scott of Money Matters. We have Carmen Carbonera of Stewart Title. Look at you. And our new sponsor, Windy City Consulting, is coming <laughs> on board. Thank you for joining us here, Joe. I'm so impressed by your skills, yeah. Grocco. I can't That's believe awesome. I remembered all that. Yeah, I can't either. <laughs> well, let's get back on 1000M here. <laughs> right. Well, before we continue talking about 1000M, I just I was looking for, I was looking for this article that I read earlier this week, and it's um it, it, from Realtor.com. It says, we have gone 29 months seeing overall inventory declines on a yearly basis, and that's had a long-lasting effect on the market. Uh, directors of Economic Research at Realtor.com, that should keep the total number of homes for sale constricted for the good part of next year. However, based on movement we detected this year, we also expect those inventory declines to de decelerate slowly throughout the next year. So I think that's an indicator. Obviously, your project is going to be due 2020. Uh, t we will break ground in 2019 and deliver in 2021. 2021. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but we are also um, stating that there's going to be more new construction hitting the market in l the latter part of this year. So I think for sellers, this is an incentive for you to realize that you're going to have some competition come fourth quarter. And so this is the best time to capture the highest yield, right? Because this is when you're going to get the highest yield for your property with interest rates going up. It's taking a lot of buyers into this like panic mode because the, the affordability index has declined so much because of the lack of inventory and then the carrying costs being high. And unfortunately, our uh, owner-occupied buyers are not looking at it from an investment
investment perspective. They're not looking at a overall picture of pricing. They're they, the way they shop is on a monthly basis. They care. They're always looking. Okay, what are the assessments? What are the carrying costs? The taxes. So they're not looking at the overall picture um, because we're so uh, monthly budget driven, right? They buy a car based on how much can they afford. Uh, they buy everything like based on what they can afford on a monthly basis and housing is one of the ways that they shop so um, this is just some some news that I thought we share today on our show because we want to encourage people to get you know if you're thinking about selling and you're like I'll just wait another year or I'll wait this uh, mm -hmm. I mean we're expecting new uh, inventory to hit the market so that's gonna be your competition we were talking at the office that typically in markets where interest rates start to climb it creates a panic in the market so people want to now get in because they don't want to miss the boat so get in now where the you know rates are still fairly pretty low prices are still pretty reasonable because the further and further out that we wait it out the more and more you're going to pay on that mortgage um, and an interest rate in the long run so keep in mind that it's best to move now. Right. And I know that overall in the last uh, couple of weeks, we've talked about, you know, just like bidding wars and buyers, 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 and how to, you know, plan ahead and how to buy. Um, but it is important that buyers recognize that there's 12% fewer homes out there, um, opportunities for you. So you have to be knowledgeable as to how you, you know, you shop around because it's not the market where you're going to say, I want this, I want that, and we're going to ask for this. Um, I mean, what are you seeing? Are people coming in to negotiate your pricing? Um, Aside from Carla, <laughs> yeah, touch on a, a touch bit. on that by the way. A little bit, <laughs> a little bit, but we're not really negotiating. <laughs> we got, That's not the right message. We, we want to say pretty firm, pretty firm on the pricing. <laughs> Just to be to fair that. to all of our buyers, mm -hmm. we want to know what they're getting into, so we don't negotiate. But when you price. have that that level of like just lifestyle amenities, right? Mm -hmm. People are going because, let's face it, our baby boomers, right? Who may be some. Um, not that I want to speak demographics, um, right? Because I can as a licensed broker, I can't start talking about demos. Mm -hmm. um, but I can honestly say that, you know, we talked about it on the show uh, with respects to who is buying, you know, and in this price point, right? And my clients weren't, but you can see where a baby boomer can want to say, I'm going to sell my home, Barrington Hills, Highland Park, we're done, mm -hmm. we're moving to the city. Oh my God. You, we always shop around like the close proximity to a yoga studio, close proximity to theater with, or whatever entertainment. Mm -hmm. And you're basically in-house. Right, everything's already in the building, so buyers are finding that very attractive. I love that. Yeah, I also have an article set here that says, baby boomers move to Florida. According to the story in the papers this morning, retired baby boomers are moving to Florida and other states that levy no personal income tax. They're searching for a pleasant environment where they can stretch their 401k and pensions. So, I mean, again, this is another opportunity for Chicagoans to, because they think people say, we're gonna move to Florida, it's a warmer weather, but then they wanna come here and they wanna mm -hmm. have an in-town in Chicago. I think this is a perfect opportunity for someone who wants to have all the amenities and the Chicago lifestyle that is, you know, the museums, the park, I mean, you're right by Grand Park. Right, yeah. This, I mean, this is obviously a great building for in-towners because of the location and all the amenities. It's so, mm -hmm. it's so easy for somebody that wants to own two homes, especially somebody that wants to live in Florida. Then they yeah. can come back here. They can be close to the lake, close to the park. Why and this may be a far-fetched question, Andrew, but what about price per square foot? Like in comparison to your major cities, if someone's watching or listening to us and they're, mm -hmm. you know, in New York or California, and we're talking about like if you want to or, you know, even anywhere, you know, right, in the, in the world, um, where buyers are coming in and are looking at Chicago as one of those metro cities with amazing, right? I always compare us to New York where, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like, well, I want to go see Hamilton. Do I see it in Chicago or do I go to Broadway? Right. But Chicago is so quaint. Our restaurants are amazing. Mm -hmm. Our, you know, we it, and you were talking about living in Miami. Right. One of the differences, I think it's Midwesterners are just so welcoming. So you get to enjoy, enjoy our amenities. Can you tell us a little bit about the price per square foot? Absolutely. So we're definitely breaking records um, in the area that we're selling right now for when it comes to price per square foot. Um, it's about five fifty to just over a thousand dollars a square foot for units on floors three through uh, sixty nine. Um, we've sold many many homes that are seven and eight hundred dollars a square foot, which, mm -hmm. which is breaking records. For oh yeah, for Chicago. Yes. Yeah, right now, but obviously we're a bargain when it comes to if you're comparing us to like New York, Manhattan, yeah. or San Francisco. They're triple out there probably. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely sure. double double to triple if you're looking in Manhattan or. Let's give a congratulation, though, right? We have a 
pretty cool congratulation here for Carla. I'll let you take the rain yeah, on that. That's right. So Carla <laughs> sold our most expensive unit Papa today Nicholas. at one thousand M for three point one million. So we're that a very, girl. We're very very <laughs> happy with her, and the developer is very happy with she her. She can uh, buy lunch and dinner now. No. Delivery I, I always get stuck in with 2021. That. When she gets paid. <laughs> <laughs> Delivery 2021. 2021, we'll all then. go out to dinner. Okay. <laughs> and looking at the producers, they're like, oh, <laughs> Carla's got money coming. Well, I think that's pretty cool, though, that, you know, our own Carla Mina sold the most expensive unit to date. In this amazing uh, development, so she's a she's a fantastic realtor. Yeah. She she really worked with us. Um, we had to sell it, and she had to help us. And yeah, and it wasn't really a hard sale, right? Because um, my clients love the architect. They had information about the architect and the design and the finishes and just the experience, right? Because it's not it's not just about where you're gonna live, but also the experience with you, um, the team, and just the way you know, like going through the models and. We're not even choosing um, finishes yet, but right. just like knowing that, you know, it's going to be a quality product. It's not going to be something where you're like, oh, I'm so concerned about the developer. Let me look up the history. Let me, you know, it's 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 a it's a great product. Right. We have a very solid team. That's for sure. I feel mm -hmm. very confident about the building. Yeah. And of course, also just going back to the location and selling Chicago. Right. I mean, you mm -hmm. have you're close to the uh, to Prickster. Um, we are close to uh, Navy Pier, and so you have theater at the lake. You have music at the lake. Mm -hmm. So there's so many, you know, you activities everywhere, everywhere throughout Millennium the summer. Park. Millennium mm -hmm. Park. What else are some of the things that um, you see people, you know, that want to live in Chicago in this area because of those amenities? Um, they can walk to the Symphony. There's numerous restaurants in the area. We have a Symphony. Good it's Lord. a little it's a little <laughs> less busy when you're in mm. South Michigan versus North Michigan. Yeah. Um, I've heard a lot of buyers comment on that. They kind of like that it's a little bit quieter down there. Um, also, it's really close to uh, Lakeshore Drive. So if they're going north or south, then it's very easy for transportation. Mm -hmm. And also, they're just a couple blocks away from the highway. So right. that's also a huge a huge yeah. selling point. Because that was your concern, too, as well, yeah. correct, Rocco? Yeah. When I said, he was like, yeah, but the location, I mean, how do I get to... What was your concern? Well, I, I, the area, the cultural mile, mm -hmm. I didn't know it well. So, you know, I'm in Streeterville now, and I know that when I walk out, I can go left and right, and I know where everything's at. Mm -hmm. So I had questions on what's around me. You know, you guys did a very good job on the website actually showing and indicating everything that surrounds the building, uh, from restaurants to the grocery store. And I want to get to the highway quickly, too. You know, because there's times I got to get to work quickly. So mm -hmm. 290 is right around the corner and 90 is right up the street. So, you know, the location is, is, is amazing. Right. Andrea, and that's a good question, too, um, as far as like your Streeterville residents, right? Because you're competing with that market. Correct. Everybody's saying, well, Streeterville and, you know, it's it's more developed and people want to live there. They're close to the lake, um, Ohio Beach, what have you. What are you saying to those buyers? So when we show buyers the building, they understand and they love the building so much they're willing to move from Streeterville because they're still not moving away from the lake. They're just moving a little bit further south in a less congested area. Mm -hmm. um, but they're most likely getting better views than they're getting now. Yeah. There's not a lot of restaurants in Streeterville, so they're actually getting more restaurants moving, mm -hmm. you know, a little further south. Just the amenities are yeah, pretty that's much one bringing I, people <clears throat> there, the design and the amenities. I, what I appreciated was the cost of the HOA. You know, actually my HOAs are currently more expensive versus the unit that I was looking at, mm -hmm. and I get so much more in this new project so yeah, that's the, something yeah the assessments are very reasonable in the building mm -hmm. we have 323 units um, to pay for the budget basically sure. the one bedroom assessments start in the 300s the two bedroom assessments start in the 500s and then the three bedroom assessments start in the 700s all right so, so let's get to reasonable. this nitro question that we asked you earlier um, and I've forgotten it already one of the most embarrassing, <laughs> embarrassing moments as a realtor. This is going to be one of the most embarrassing moments for you, Rocco. <laughs> At least we got it on air. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard for me to get embarrassed, but I was just trying to think back over the past 12 years. Um, 
And I would say like about a year and a half ago, I was taking out of town buyers out to look at properties. They're buying a property for their son and it was raining outside and we were looking at many buildings downtown and so my flashers were constantly on. And so we went back to my cars in the middle of the day and my, my key lock wouldn't work. It's just a button entry. And so I kept hitting unlock and it wouldn't unlock my car. And so I was like panicking and so we couldn't get into my car and then it was rush hour. So I put my clients in an Uber, sent them to the next listing, called the agent, said, I'm so sorry, I can't get into my car. So then I called my car dealership, reamed them out for my expensive car, not opening. (laughs) So then I cabbed to my house, got another key, went back to my car, the guy that sells me my cars called me and he said, there's a key inside of your, there's a key inside of the opener. You just have to open it and you use a key to open your door. Yeah. And I'm so used to just hitting buttons and sure. things automatically opening that I didn't realize there was a key in, inside of my keypad just to open the door old school with a yep. key. <laughs> that is pretty embarrassing, but that would have happened to Carla too because she's not too tech savvy. <laughs> So it has happened to Carla <laughs> a lot of times. Well, I figured out later. I've also lost my key. and <laughs> She gets a lot of flat tires. <laughs> she hits a lot of Look potholes. Look at my new phone. <laughs> Look at that clunker. What the hell is that? Nice. This is called therapy is for that Carla. The otter? <laughs> this is otter box. Yeah, that's Jeez. otter box. <laughs> that thing weighs like uh, five pounds. Oh, you made me get this. Not You're that. Like... You're... I think your brothers made you get that. <laughs> Oh my, God. <laughs> my brother trying... brought me an otter box too, so yeah. it's okay. It's terrible because you can't type, but seriously, Monday was the worst day of my life. Like what my happened? phone wasn't working. Oh. I like, I don't, I don't know. It's just been crazy. Like everything just fails. Lost keys, lost phone, broken phone. So finally, I don't think I can crack this. <laughs> uh, let's see. I can. <laughs> don't throw that. At me. I'll throw this at you and see if it breaks or not. <laughs> Great stuff. But you know what? When it happens, when it's spring market like this and you're going crazy, every client deserves our attention. And, you know, you want to give each client everything, right? All of your time. And so you're getting pulled from different directions and, and you're dealing with this, you know, it's it's a crazy market. I'm so busy right now. Right? I'm you can, exhausted. <laughs> you're like, I can fall asleep. Like, I can close my eyes right now I and be nap. like. I can nap. I can nap right now. <laughs> so sorry. This is uh, therapy venting for Carla. So we're getting to the end of our show here. We we decided to cut the show a little bit short today because we are a little understaffed. (laughs) Some people decided to take a a day off as uh, they needed. Uh, But we want to thank everybody. uh, And am I okay here, Will, to wrap this? Absolutely. Andrea Hebner, thank you so much for visiting us. Yes, thank thank you you for having me. 1000M for allowing you to come on at Properties. Keep kicking ass out there. You guys are awesome. Uh, Thank you to all of our sponsors for keeping the lights on. We got one more week in this uh, old studio. We're moving to the new location, which is going to be at 303 East Wacker. Pretty badass studio, by the way, too. Uh, All of our sponsors, again, uh, Carmen Carbonera of Stewart Title, uh, Lisa Husino of Allstate Insurance, Joanna Diaz of Credit Rx, Tamika Scott, Money Matters, and our new sponsor, Windy City Consulting. When ordering permits, make sure you reach out to them. Carla Mina of Coldwell Banker. I am Graco Funes of, oh, I forgot. <laughs> I loan home mortgage. I almost said I'll stay there. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Oh Thank you guys God. for watching. Oh, see, I'm not the only one who needs coffee today. It's been great. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Facebook and all those social networks that we have as Market Overdrive. Mm -hmm. I do want to thank our sponsors for hanging out with us and supporting us in this endeavor that we call Market Overdrive, where we're able to get people in here and share what's happening in the city and bring in information about amazing projects like 1000M. I want to shout out to my girl, Andrea, for making time to come out from our busy schedule to share the information with you. Remember, pricing for 2018 is going to change soon so get in now because um obviously graco is trying to buy there so all of graco's yeah, fans I need some deals <laughs> so that i can afford to <laughs> buy, buy at 1000 before, the <laughs> before they raise the prices again oh wait you are you giving away and guys tickets? well am i still on we got some tickets to sunday's game the white Sox are playing 
Minnesota Twins. Hey, you're from Minnesota. Oh, hometown. Yep. So hit, hit us up on social media if you guys are interested in going. We got two tickets but you, you, how are you giving them? You can't like everybody's gonna want them. So the, the f- I don't know. The first person who reaches out to me and meets me at the bar. No, will have these tickets it. available <laughs> for you. Andrea, what's your favorite call? Wait, Andrea's gonna tell us her favorite caller. So if you guess on Facebook, okay, Andrea's favorite yes. caller, then we'll send you your tickets. Grok was gonna meet up with you, and he's going to drive the tickets to you. I will deliver them <laughs> personally. Not us and Carla. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, Andrew's favorite color. You get to win tickets. Thank you. And if you found this information uh, useful or you know anyone that is looking to buy or sell, please make sure you reach out to us at info at marketoverdrive.com. Is that still our email, Zachary Sanchez? Yes. Yes, it is, yes, it is. info at marketoverdrive.com. Thank you.